Okay. All right. I um, my heart gave a bit of a a bit of a jump when I was listening to uh, Brother Ty's testimony this afternoon because he used the word towards the end. He used the word hope, and um, I actually sent him a test a, a text and said, "Great testimony, brother." And by the way, hope is the title of the second talk this afternoon. So we're all on the we're all on the same page here. So that was. Uh, that was really good in terms of that. In fact, some of the things that Ty said in his talk we can actually draw on today. Now, let's see if we're in business. Last time we did this, it didn't like us, did it, Luke? And it still doesn't like us today. Did you press the button then? Yes, all right, there you go. I put new batteries and everything in, you see. I'll, I'll revert to my saying, don't work with children, animals or technology, because they're all going to embarrass you at one point in terms of that. All right, let's have a look in Ephesians 2. We're just reading the scripture here. It says, and Paul's here talking to Ephesus. Of course, Ephesus is in, in modern-day Turkey, in, in what is called Asia in the Bible. And these were people that were generally strangers to the kingdom of God. These are people that have uh, Gentiles. There was a few Jewish people there at the time. But he's really setting the, setting the scene for them. And in verse 12 of Ephesians 2, he said, At that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And so it really sums up the situation that the people at Ephesus were in, of course, prior to the New Testament era coming in through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So he's really painting the picture there um, for them that they, they just had no chance, they had no hope. And we really live in a world where uh, we're seeing uh, more concerns, aren't we, about hope and about where we're going and you know we're sort of rocking along there and all of a sudden we get COVID-19 up here and a few other things and it sort of rocked a few people around the world and stirred things up and, and all those sort of things. But the Christian message, of course, is that we have hope. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, as I said, it hasn't gone unnoticed. Next slide, thanks, uh, button pusher. Um, you've probably read this one before. Ten years ago, we had Steve Jobs, Bob Hope and Johnny Cash. Now, of course, we have no jobs, no hope and no cash. There you go. Um, I think there's another version that says that, please don't kill Kevin Bacon. I left that one off today. Didn't want to offend any of our vegetarian friends in terms of that. So it's a bit of a joke, but sadly those three gentlemen uh, have all passed on. But also a lot has changed in this world. And I'm not, I, I don't know when Jesus Christ is, is, is coming back. And our brother sort of said this afternoon, he said something very, very clever, I thought, and very smart. He said, it doesn't really matter about that because it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen at some point in time. And we can speculate, we can do this, we can do all, all that sort of stuff. What really matters, and Ty brought this point out very clearly in his, his testimony, is that what really matters is that until that happens, we've just got to get on with the job. We've got to get out there and, and talk to people. And, you know, the world um, realises, and Pastor Brad's made comment of, of recent times, and he's right, um, how easy it is now to get into a conversation with people because people, everyday people can see that there's problems in the world. There's difficulties out there. You know, we suffer from pestilence. You know, we've got uh, perhaps a lot of lack of leadership, a lot of problems around the world. It, it, there's, there's, it's, it's an easy, easy time to start a conversation, as it were, about the things of God. But it, it's important how we go about that conversation. Next slide, thanks. Uh, uh, button pushes down there, thank you. I really like this uh, little one here, talking about hope. And I guess that's the contrast that we've, we, we've got there, where obviously on, my right, on the right-hand side of the screen you can see a... A farming paddock there, even half the trees are alive and doing well. Um, I remember being down at a friend of mine property in New England there, well, probably six or eight years ago now, went there a lot, and he had a, quite a bit of money and he, he put a lot of money into uh, sowing down uh, grass, uh, rye grass and fertiliser and really developed them, pushed trees over and really developed his property. Um, Rob's been there, he might remember it. But the neighbour... Well, he, he's, he's a poor farmer and he's got sort of gum trees and twigs and scrub and there's very little value in, in what the neighbour's got. But my friend down there, he's, um, well, in fact, he hasn't got it now. He sold it to Gina Reinhardt. But it was a really well-developed well, well -developed property. And it just shows the contrast. And I just wonder, 
Is that the contrast that's, that's out there in the world today? We can see that on the left-hand side, there's a lot of people have got no hope, have they, in, in, in terms of that? And yet we're in, the, we're in the green pastures. If we go to Psalm 23, we've got the Lord leading us to uh, green pastures and those sort of things. So there's a sort of contrast that we face in the world today. Next one, thanks, uh, Luke. We'll go over here in First Peter chapter 3. Great little scripture, this, and it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And there's a bit to digest in this verse. Sanctifying the Lord in our hearts is having a place in our heart for the Lord God and having a, perhaps a provision, uh, having a, an awareness, having a readiness there that in our hearts, and we've been promoting this, haven't we, of recent times, we say at the start of the week or even the start of the day, have a bit of a prayer and say, Lord, today I want to meet someone. Today I want to talk to someone. Today I want to be, have an opportunity. And we find if we do that, the Lord does, does bring people along. On a, on a regular basis to one of that because they're out there we hear it in the gifts we hear it everywhere so this has got to be in our hearts and in our minds that that's that's something we're mindful of that's something we're we're aware of to them and it says to be ready always to give an answer we're going to have a bit of a look at what that really means but to every man that asks for the reason of the hope so this isn't us going out and like if the boys go down to the uh, train station there i think on thursdays they go you know that I don't think they hold up signs, they might. I, they don't think they hold up signs saying, we've got a lot of hope or something like that, you know, in terms of that. This is, to, and this is the context of where people are asking us as Christians. So the onus is on them. Now, why are they going to ask? Why are they going to ask is because they see something in us. They see the light on the hill. They see our testimony. They're not just going to sort of go around randomly saying, oh, are you a Christian? What do you believe? It doesn't work like that particularly in, in terms of that. So we're seeing here that there's something happening to facilitate a person asking in terms of that. And, and we have this reason of hope. And also it tells us how we've got to do it. We've got to do it in meekness, and we'll have a bit of a look at that, and in fear. So if we go on to the next one, thanks, uh, folks, for pressing the button there. Um, it's interesting that, that what hope is, this is the, uh, the Greek version of the word or the, the explanation, that hope is... Uh, to hope or have an expectation, to have a, a trust or a confidence. You know, when we're talking to people, let's hope, play on words here, that we are conveying that context, that we are conveying that we are joyful and confident of an expectation of eternal salvation. Because I'd suggest to you, if we didn't have an expectation of eternal salvation, we probably wouldn't be here today. We'd probably be somewhere else. There's a reason we're here. The reason we're here is we believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and we have this living hope within us. We have this expectation that, you know, we, we, we're going to be inheritors of eternal life. And we don't know too much about it. We just know it's going to be really, really good. The Bible tells us that eye hasn't uh, seen and ear heard the things which God has prepared for those that love him. So it's just way off the scale in terms of that. I don't quite know what well, we don't know more about it. Maybe we can't handle it. I don't know. But we know all things that God does are good. And we can have this great expectation that's going to be great beyond our wildest dreams. Pretty good thing to aim for. Pretty good hope to have for. Pretty good thing to have confidence in in terms of that. We go to our next slide. It's interesting here that this word, we just want to talk about this. It says, always ready to give an answer. And the uh, Greek explanation here of answer is a reason statement or argument. So our answer, when we're asked, when people come up and say, hey, what, you know, what, what, you know, what's this Christian thing? What are you about? You know, why are you so happy? It was the cost and the Apostle Paul. Now, um, after Paul spoke to them, sorry, Peter, I'll get it right. None of you picked me up on that. You must be all tired this afternoon in terms of that. I feel, saw Phil smiling, he might have got me. But anyway, Apostle Peter, he got to about verse 37, as we know, and he actually told them, how to get saved in verse 37 but for about 20 verses before that he, we can improve in the area of telling people why they need to get saved because if you don't have the why you don't really need the how in in, in terms of that so it's about having a, a reasonable statement 
an argument, a, a point of view, a discussion in, in, in terms of that. Sometimes we share our testimony with people and that's great, but everyone is an individual. So what might be great to you may not mean anything to that other person. It may or it may not. They are not you. They will be different. They will have different beliefs, different fears, different preferences, all those sort of things. So what's common is, is the fact that we want to believe in God, that's why we're here today, and the common salvation experience and the common overcoming. That's the common part of it. But our experiences are all going to be different. We hear that, don't we, in our testimonies along the way. So our, our reason statement isn't so much our testimony. It could be part of our testimony, but that may not be the solution for that person. Really what we were doing is we're sharing an insight into the word of God and how the plan of God works. That's what the reason argument is. That's what uh, Peter was doing on the day of Pentecost there in Acts, recorded in the book of Acts. He was actually rattling out the argument that says, you guys have been under the law and Ten Commandments for 1,410 years or whatever it is. Well, guess what, guys? After Jesus Christ, that's all changed. This is the new world order, literally, and this is what's happened in terms of that. And, and there was enough of them there to realise that and their hearts were pricked and we know the story. Then he gave them the how and said, this is, this is how you get into the kingdom of God. So think about this as we go about our way. Think about what is, what is our answer? What is our response? And as I said, it's not something we need to sort of particularly write down or anything like that, but we need to be persuasive. We need to have a, an argument. You go into court and the, the one barrister gets up there and he, he has an argument about you know, what he thinks about it, and the other guy gets up and the judge sort of sits there and all this sort of thing in terms of that and they get pretty excited about it at times of that. Well, we're not in court, but we're in the business of, of spreading the gospel. We're in the business of, of, of getting the message, getting the message over. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, meekness. This means to be uh, uh, mild of disposition, gentle of spirit and meekness. Now, that sounds like all of us, doesn't it? Mild of, yes, Chris is nodding. Mild of disposition, uh, quite, uh, quite gentleness of spirit and meekness. And we've got our friend there from the baseball game, I think it is, in terms of trying to make his point. I have seen people, not in this church, but years ago, I have seen people witness to people like that. I've seen people, we've got a few nods, getting right up in their face. You know, you know it doesn't, that's not what it's all about in terms of that, because I don't know, I, you know, to me the guy's being argumentative more than making an argument in, term, in, in terms of that. So you, you don't get there uh, by, by arguing with people. You also don't get there by telling people why they are wrong, particularly, and, 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 or saying, oh, your church is no good, mate. You know, it's a piece of junk, you know, it's no good, da, 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 da. I don't know if that's a winning strategy in terms of that, and it, you know, uh, in, in terms of that. Um, I um, haven't been travelling lately because of COVID-19, but I, when I travel, I quite often go on the taxis in Sydney and that sort of thing, and you always get all these big range of taxi drivers, you know, Chinese ones and... Oh, Anyway, so you can never work out where they're from, so I've got this standard line now. You know, how's your day going? Oh, good. And what languages do you speak? So away they go. And I think, right, no one wastes what languages they speak. You know, oh, Farsi, okay, you're Iranian, okay, away you go, boom, boom, boom. And, and you know, you sort of work out pretty much straight away. Lebanese are a bit tricky because you don't know if they're Maronites or, or Muslims, you see. You've got to work on that one a bit. But anyway, that, that's okay in terms of that. But I'll tell you what, some of these guys. You know, they're, they're pretty solid in their beliefs. We don't, we don't agree with their beliefs, and those sort of things. But the last thing you want to do is, is, really, is really upset them. There's one guy, oh, he's an Indonesian guy there one night years ago. He was really fired up about it. He was a Shia, and he was, uh, yeah, he was a Shia, and he was really fired up about the Christian church is no good. They have idols in their churches, and he was going right off, and I thought, I'm not going to upset this bloke. He might pull a knife out or something. He was, he was really fired up. It was at night, that sort of thing. Sort of thing. But you know, there's, there's no point in arguing with that, those guys. Bit of an extreme example. You know, and away you go. So we've got an answer. We've got an argument. We'll all have a, perhaps a different way on that. We don't have to sort of... We're not like the politicians that, the, the, you know, the, the, the opposition leader or the prime minister's office sends out to, them, to the leading ministers cabinet ministers talking points every day okay so they send out these are the talking points of the day so the ministers are all got to talk to them in terms of that so they know what to talk about and what to say and so well we're not in that business we don't have a standard cheat sheet per se but we can all have an argument we can all put our argument across in meekness next slide please wendy thank you um and i guess this in it talks about in in uh, meekness and in fear and this particular word here means respect and it says their respect is the rule now I'd like to think if you give respect, 
um, you're going to get respect back, but that's not always true, unfortunately. But uh, I think the Bible tells us that, you know, if we, if, if we don't give respect, we've got no chance of getting any respect back. So we, we get off in terms of that. Again, we need to be respectful of what people believe because we're not there to, to win battles. We're there to win wars. We're there to get a long-term solution. We're trying to shine the light of the gospel, in essence, into whoever we're talking to and saying, hey, this is how it works. This is where you can, you can fit in. Um, next one, thanks, uh, Wendy. So... The argument being the reason statement uh, or argument, to me there's sort of three things, three elements of this, and that is the why. You know, why do I need to become a Christian? Why do I need to do this? We struggle with, we struggle with our, my sister-in-law on this scale, sister. She says, but why do we need to be one with God? Why can't we just be good people? And the problem with that is that everyone have a, has a different definition of what being good is and for someone being good is whatever and for someone else that's terrible in terms of that so it, it, it just doesn't work that way entering the kingdom of god is obviously not compulsory it, it's something that we want to do but we, we need to explain the why we need to try and get across in that then we've got the hows which is the salvation message and then we've got the what's and i, I like the i like the what's we'll talk a bit more as we, we go go through next slide thanks in terms of the why, is we, we've got to explain why. And what we're doing in essence is because God wants uh, a, a person, I've got a typo there, a person to be adopted spiritually into his family. That's probably one definition that we could use. There's probably 50 others you could use in, in terms of that. But that's the bottom line. When someone witnessed to us, uh, however long ago, it doesn't matter, Really what it was all about was that they wanted us to enter the kingdom of God, which meant we got adopted through the Holy Spirit, talks about this in the New Testament, receiving the spirit of adoption into the body of Christ, in, into God's family. We, we just happened to come here and fellowship, but we're part of, part of the body, body of Christ in terms of that. So it's important to explain why. And, you know, you can say a lot of things to people. You can say things like, oh, um, everyone's nice at our church. Well, everyone might be nice at the soccer club too, at the football club or something like that. Or you can say, well, um, our pastors are really handsome and they'd probably know you haven't lent them if you said something like that. No offence to Pastor Brad. That. But you could say a lot of things that are sort of aspects or attributes about the church, which are all true and important, but they're not necessarily part of the argument of why that person should come along. That's just part of the deal in terms of that. So it really gets down to having a message of being able to articulate being able to talk to someone and just explain the basic fundamentals of salvation not how to get saved but why to get saved why do i need to do this in terms of that and if you go and read acts 2 again peter gets that across to the people there today next slide as i'm running out of voice the how of course is the <coughs> pardon me the conversion process we are really really good at this we've got it down absolutely pat we've got it all worked out but that's step number two. So don't put the how before the why. And sadly, going back many years, uh, not in this church and on this fellowship here, but in our earlier days, we've seen people, particularly younger people, sort of encouraged to very quickly, um, without really telling the why, receive the Holy Spirit, see them get baptised, and see the Holy Spirit, and then they don't last, which is a great tragedy. And I suspect that they didn't make an informed decision. They, they didn't know the whys. They didn't know why they were doing it. They might have been doing it because, um, you know, their friends were doing it or that was the thing to do or they, I'm sure perhaps their heart was in the right place. It certainly would have been if they received the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said to us in Matthew 28, he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptise in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So there needs to be some element of teaching, some element of recognition, some element of understanding, not have to encyclopedic knowledge from Genesis you know, through to Revelation but have a commitment of understanding of why the person is, is doing that so don't rush them don't rush them sometimes it's the people that take the longest then out the best and that right brother in your testimony there it's all right he's not listening now he's gone to sleep all right um the watts can we go to the next one please so I really like this and I'd, I'd like us in our testimonies to uh, you know perhaps talk a bit more about this because I said we're pretty good at telling people how to get saved but what does it really mean you know now that there's essence and benefits the essence of it is 
the guts of it, if you pardon the vernacular, is, is the spiritual meaning. What it means is that we are the sons and daughters of God, that we're, that we're, we're, you know, we're, we're inheritors of the kingdom, we're heirs with, with, with the Father. All that stuff means we're in the kingdom of God and that's where we're going. We've got our seat reserved, reserved in heavenly places and all those sort of things. Don't worry about trying to reserve your seat at the Gabba on the 20th of October. That's only a game of Australian rules. Don't worry about that. Make sure you've got your seat reserved in heavenly places in Christ. That's the one that, that really matters. And of course, but apart from the essence... We also have the, the, the benefits of blessings. We have all these blessings in our lives of, of having our needs met, of the of, uh, of Lord looking after our health, of, of, of just really helping us in so many situations. You know, the Lord said he's, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. And I think in life we quite often find ourselves in, in different situations. They can even be emotional situations or, or difficult. There's no shortage of, of difficulties in this life. And at those times, that's where it's really a great blessing to be able to call upon the name of the Lord and to say, Lord, I just know that you're able to encourage me, you're able to succor me, you're able to guide me because you were tempted in all points, points like, uh, uh, like, like as you were, so you, you can help us along the street. So we see a blessing and benefits here in terms of that. And again, when we're talking to someone, there's nothing, nothing wrong with telling people what it means to us. We live in the age of people want to know about what sort of an experience we have. If you've bought something lately or signed up for something, you get killed with all these surveys, you know, how was the stay at the hotel, you know, how was the signing up for this service? It drives me nuts. I don't have to drive you nuts and all those sort of things, you know. And then you start answering the survey. I think, oh, I'll be kind. Put in your own words what you liked about it. You thought, no, why did I start this, you know. And what's this all about? It's all about experience. It's all about people wanting to know how we feel about things. And that's the world we're in today. A lot of people want to know how it feels in terms of that. Well, you know, if you come on Sunday afternoon, you've got Brother Mick out there smiling and singing. It feels pretty good, and all the people said, Amen, it does. You wouldn't want any better than that in, in terms of that. So, yeah, so it feels good, but feeling good's only part of the exercise in terms of that. We need, of course, to obviously underpin it with our walk and with our salvation. And so, last slide, thank you, Wendy, is, and are we ready to always have an answer? I don't have the answer to that. Only you have the answer to that. But have a think about it. And, and again, we're not asking you to sort of write something down in terms of that, but be mindful when we're speaking to people, just don't jump in straight away with the salvation message. That's important, yes. We need to explain why. We need to tell them how. And, and don't be frightened to share your testimony about what the Lord's done. Don't be frightened to share your experience of what it means to you and all the people said. Amen. Well, I'm done. I think I'll hand to Pastor Brad. Thank